of Art the College of Arts and Sciences at Tennessee State University, and the topic is African Americans and the Constitution. And of course, Dr. Lovett, during the uh, first two segments, we've talked about uh, some aspects of the African American experience, uh, historical experience. Mm -hmm. But let's uh, allow you the last uh, five or six minutes that we have here to uh, sort of uh, summarize, not only summarize, but also to introduce some additional information of, about African Americans in the Constitution after the Civil War period. Let's right. do it from that perspective. Well, uh, one of the things um, that has always preoccupied this country has been uh, uh, the issues of race and class. Mm -hmm. And those uh, issues have always been a constitutional and legal issues. Mm -hmm. There are many books that people could read on the Constitution and slavery, some excellent mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, other books that have been done by constitutional historians and legal uh, mm -hmm. scholars because those two issues have always been the center of many, mm -hmm. many court uh, battles. Mm -hmm. And they still are today. Affirmative action is an example. Mm -hmm. And so we have never since the days of slavery gotten away from mm -hmm. uh, the court trying to mediate race and, and mm -hmm. class uh, mm -hmm. conflicts in, in American society. Mm -hmm. But in 1865, uh, the Constitution was amended uh, the 13th Amendment on December the 18th, 1865, mm -hmm. ratified by the states which uh, outlawed slavery forever. That mm -hmm. was one of the best amendments for mm -hmm. African Americans. Slavery is no longer legal mm -hmm. anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. And in 1868, uh, the 14th Amendment was added to the Constitution, mm -hmm. which uh, it provided citizenship, equal protection, and due process of the laws mm -hmm. for, for former slaves or anybody regardless of race, uh, religion, mm -hmm. and so on. And then two years later in 1870, the 15th Amendment mm -hmm. was added, which guaranteed the right to vote mm -hmm. to all persons regardless of previous condition of servitude, mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in fact, African Americans had been voting since 1867 mm -hmm. because the, um, uh, the um, Reconstruction Acts passed by mm -hmm. the Congress provided mm -hmm. for their vote. Mm -hmm. And by 1868, uh, they were the majority of voters in the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, that allowed them the whole office as well. Mm -hmm. And so 22 African Americans served in the Congress mm -hmm. until 1905. This is in Washington, D.C. Right, mm -hmm. until the last of them left, mm -hmm. George White of North Carolina in mm -hmm. 1905. Mm -hmm. And no African Americans will return to Congress until the 1960s mm -hmm. because of the laws that Southern states put in place mm -hmm. to disenfranchise African Americans. Mm -hmm. Much like the constitutional mm -hmm. uh, laws that are being put into place in southern states now. For mm -hmm. example, in Alabama, one-third of African-American men cannot vote in, Afri mm -hmm. in, in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And they cannot vote in Alabama in 1998, 99, mm -hmm. because of the convict laws. That mm -hmm. is, if they have been felons or whatever, mm -hmm. they are disenfranchised forever mm -hmm. in the state of Alabama. And so one-third of African-Americans even today mm -hmm. are suffering uh, men what they suffered back in the 1890s mm -hmm. when they were subject to poll taxes and literacy tax tests and all those things to take away the vote from people mm -hmm. of color. But um, the uh, Constitution has always been sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, used to try to decide racial issues in our society because mm -hmm. it's such a racially divided you know, mm -hmm. uh, society then and uh, as mm -hmm. it is now. And of course, as you know, the fight is over affirmative action mm -hmm. and all the other things, but they're the same issues. But these are all constitutional yeah, problems. Right. The uh, issues is who's going to dominate the society, mm -hmm. who's going to participate in it, and who's mm -hmm. not going to participate in mm -hmm. it. Who's going to be black, and those are citizens with, with limited privileges. That's what the word black means. Mm -hmm. And who's going to be white? Those mm -hmm. are citizens with all of the privileges. That's what white means. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's no such thing as a white race or a mm -hmm. black race. Mm -hmm. They're African Americans, European Americans, mm -hmm. or Asian Americans, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're the only country that has a definition mm -hmm. that uh, deals with race. Mm -hmm. And that particular definition means that there's a dividing line. Mm -hmm. That's all that black, white mm -hmm. means. And the Supreme Court has always, since slavery, been in the middle of that trying to mediate those issues. Mm -hmm. How much do we give this side and how much do we let them mm -hmm. go forward and how much does this side get to keep mm -hmm. them from going too far mm -hmm. forward. That's basically mm -hmm. what the constitutional issues mm -hmm. are about. Many of these particular um, things will be discussed uh, as far as Nashville is concerned in mm -hmm. my new book which was being mm -hmm. published by mm -hmm. the University of Arkansas Press. Mm -hmm. And that book will be appearing in May mm -hmm. of 1999. It's entitled African American History of Nashville mm -hmm. from 1780 to 1930, mm -hmm. Elites and Dilemmas. And for example, uh, by 1867, Nashville has five black city councilmen. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that are serving in the city council. It has... Uh, this is right after the war. Right after the war. Mm -hmm. The first African-American to be elected to the Tennessee General Assembly is from Davidson County, mm -hmm. Samson W. Cable. Mm -hmm. By 1881, there's a second African-American elected mm -hmm. from this county to, to the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. And across the state of Tennessee, especially in West Tennessee, where 70% mm -hmm. of former slaves mm -hmm. live and still live today, mm -hmm. about 70, 69 or 70% live in West Tennessee, uh, there were even more African Americans mm -hmm. who served in city councils, county commissions, as well as the state legislature. And then, of course, there were laws put in place mm -hmm. to disenfranchise them. Mm -hmm. And by 1900, there are no African Americans mm -hmm. serving on the city council of Nashville or serving in the state general assembly mm -hmm. of Tennessee. And in some ways, in Alabama, mm -hmm. Mississippi, and Georgia, just through mm -hmm. the convict laws alone, mm -hmm. uh, we're moving back toward that we'll way. Say, oh, and mm -hmm. that is, we mm -hmm. can use convict laws to mm -hmm. disenfranchise Chaz. them again, mm -hmm. because you can't use other means because mm -hmm. of the eight, 1965 mm -hmm. Voting Rights Act mm -hmm. and because of the 24th Amendment to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We can use convict laws mm -hmm. to take away their right to vote. You know, uh, Dr. Lovett, let me thank you for coming by and giving us that excellent information. And let me also encourage our audience to uh, tune in again uh, next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.